Hello, everybody. My name is Federico Ariza. I work at Matrox here in Montreal, in the West Island, if we can call that Montreal. Uh, <laughs> actually, I, I, I just proposed this talk because I'm looking for somebody. I need somebody to work with me at Matrox. So if there are physicists that knows Python and they love to code and they love to go into the, into the, into the lab, please contact to me afterwards. Okay, uh, I'm going to start with something simple, just to describing what is to characterize a camera. I guess everybody knows what everybody knows what a camera is, right? I mean, I guess, I hope. <laughs> so uh, let's see if we can do it. Man, the resolution is crappy. New is focus or is res or, or is it my res ah okay. Yeah, give me a second. It's just that I always wanted to do this. I always wanted to try to try to do uh, what? Bigger font, bigger text. Uh, yeah. Okay. First, I'm I'm just going to show you more or less what it implies c camera characterization. Let's say uh, I we have a camera. Uh, because it's a second screen, I can... Sorry, I'm going to turn myself a little bit. From... Oh, yeah. Oh. Ah! <laughs> this is not going to... <laughs> okay, okay. From... <laughs> and on top of that, this little device, it has a little bit of lag between what I type and what I see on the screen. <laughs> Camera, let's say from uh, whoops. Run this one just Just make sure okay, let's try it. Okay. Yeah, yeah it worked. It's <laughs> a cool tip from an expert I put in you. and Mad blood lip, yeah. No? no, no, no. no? Mad blood. 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 What's so? Mad blood lip. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> Man, this is going. To, this is going, not going to work actually. I mean, this is this is taking too long. Let's try just opening one that I have already ready, just in case. Okay. <laughs> uh, you see? Okay. Basically, characterizing a camera implies I have a camera. Here I, it's just a, a little camera simulator in, in, in Python in the EMVA 1288 model that I'm the, I, I'm the author of that model. And what a, a camera does is just give you great images. Very exciting, you know, all the sexiness of noise. Here is, no, because a camera, you, you don't characterize a camera with the lens and with a hot cheek in the front, no. That's not the way to characterize a camera, unfortunately. If not, I would have a lot of fun in my lab. Is basically taking images without a lens of a light source that gives you gray images. In, in this case, it's called a fa a fa a fake color, so it's kind of bluish. But that's what a camera does. And what you do, is basically you just increase the intensity of light and measure some things. For example, here I measure the, uh, the radiance that I'm, that I'm uh, giving to the camera, the intensity of the light, basically. I'm measuring the, the mean value and the standard deviation of the image. And what it gives me, if it gives me something, sometime, yeah? Let me see. I don't see it. You see it? I don't see it. Whoops, it's not here. Why? Oh, okay, here. It tells me, uh, camera tells me, I, I increased the, the amount of light here in the x-axis, and 
what I get is the output of the camera increases, and then it gets to saturation, and it doesn't increase anymore. It means it's white. Very exciting. And then if I check the noise and say, hey, look at the noise. It increases, increases, it gets to saturation, and then, bam, back to zero. Again, that's what it's supposed to, to happen. This is a simulation, a simulated camera, so it works fairly well as a simulated camera. Now, let's go for the presentation, right? What, is, what steps are involved in characterizing a camera? Is the first is the image capture, then I'm going to do some data extraction from the images that I capture, then data processing of the, on the, and that data, then showing the results, and finally generating a report. And believe me, it's Python everywhere. There is no single part that doesn't have Python. The image capture is the most difficult part. Why? Because you don't know what, cam what kind of camera you are getting. If you have a USB, a Gigi camera, a camera link, one of those freaky wireless cameras, you don't know what it is, you don't know what format it is coming, you don't know what libraries do you have to talk to the camera to be able to grab images, and you don't know what format they're going to give you the image in. Everybody think a format is a PNG, but no. If you're lucky, you get TIFF. In industrial cameras, I'm talking about industrial cameras, not, not, the, not the everyday camera. Even everyday camera, you take a Canon, you take it with a hacker development kit, and you get the raw images, good luck opening those. Data extraction. Okay, uh, just to show you something, for example, here, I'm going to, give me a second, I'm going to show you what, we're not going to do the, the, the image capture here, I'm just going to show you what it is, is hundreds and hundreds of images with different exposure times, with different lighting, that's it, that's all. And just to make it simpler, we get a file that tells me each image, what exposure time, what amount of, uh, of light do I have for each image. That's it. Now, in this guy, let's see. I have it here. Uh, I'm going to start. Then I just uh, call the, 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 rep, uh, the directory that we were talking about with all the images. And I call a script that just parses the file and, and uh, parses the files and tell me what images do I have and told me, ah, you have all those images. Then, I'm going to load the images. Group. it takes a little bit because it's... Then, I'm going to show the data that, is, that I can extract from, the, uh, from, from those images. It's very exciting data. It's additions, variances, Temporal noise, spatial noise, a couple of, uh, of extra information regarding a uh, amount of light, all that. So, the data extraction is basically a bunch of little scripts, like open the image, get the image, and then append the, make a, an array with the mean values and the standard deviation values, these kind of things. It's a lot of different functions that do these kind of things, but just to give you an idea. Then it comes the data processing. Now I have all my data, what do I do with it? I start doing data analysis for the data guys over there. I do it, some little regressions on my data just to fit lines to make sure they, I have a straight line where I'm supposed to have a straight line. I do a couple of FFTs for the physicist. This, for example, this kind of things I do. Uh, FFTs in the x-axis but average on the y-axis. It's fun. <laughs> Did I say I, I, I was looking for an employee? Yeah. So, I take my data, I process it, and I get results. Boom, I, I get a bunch of, of, of results. All, all kind of things that are important for camera characterization. What kind of noise do you have? What is the sensitivity of your camera? 
What is the quantum efficiency of your camera? What is the dark, the dark current of your camera? That kind of things that will affect the performance of your camera while using it, actually using it for whatever you are using it. If it's for uh, it's space uh, exploration, you need one kind of behavior. If it's for in industrial, you have another one. If it's for commercial use, like taking uh, photos for a catalog, is another kind of noise, another kind of characterization that you need. And then, uh, for example, here we see the results. We're going to check the results. What is important in the results? I have the quantum efficiency. It tells me 45. What 45 says? It said 45% of photons are transformed into electrons. That's physics, but it's done by Python. And I just can print the, all the results that I, that I have. If you might be interested, I guess you are not. And then I can plot the results. Let me see if it went somewhere. Yeah. And I get tons of images, tons of, of graphics showing the behavior of my camera. It says, OK, for example, these fits that I made, I say, oh, OK, look, I have a little bit of deviation here. How is the noise? Oh, it's not that bad. It closes to ideal. Sensitivity. Is it sensitive enough? Yeah, kind of. In the dark, how, is, how does it behave in the dark? Normally, the, if, one important thing, if you're going to remember one thing from this talk is if your camera doesn't have noise, it's not a good camera. Really. If it doesn't have noise, it means it's crap. They are cheating you. There is, <laughs> there is no, it, it has to have noise. Have to have noise. Linearity, how linear is my camera? Deviation from the linearity. Oh, look, I deviate from linearity. If it's perfectly li linear, it's not a good camera. There are no real cameras that are perfectly linear. Sorry, sorry. What is linearity? Linearity, it means every single step in, in intensity of light should give you the same increase in response from the camera, if it's perfectly linear. But it's not exactly like that. It always deviates a little bit. I do, um, we do histograms, and the histograms that we're talking about, the, the FFTs that we were showing before. We do uh, a little bit of uh, hi uh, histograms, FFTs, sorry. Uh, and a little bit of profiles to see how our images are, perf uh, are, are doing. Let's see. Is it a regular camera or a CCD? It doesn't matter. A CCD is going to behave a little bit better if it's a good CCD. If not, but a regular camera is a CMOS, so it's kind of, basically it's the same. Today, the, the, the behavior is not that different. Results that we were talking about, what kind of things do we see, how sensitive is the camera, how much noise do I have, how much, how much the noise increases with temperature, that's important for you if you are taking pictures in the hot, you're in Cuba, or <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I mean, I would like to. Uh, does it perform well in low light? Does it, uh, how about high light intensity if you are taking uh, pictures of cars in the traffic? That kind of things. And this is the kind of graphics that, that I had to produce with that. Then it comes the report generation. I did a huge amount of templates with Jinja, and I put all the results that we saw before with all those little and LaTeX included of a LaTeX name and all that. And it's supposed to work, let's say. Let's see. Report. And let's see, let I say, generate my report. Uh, come on. Ah, I have to close the image, sorry, because. Ah, nice. Now, let's see. Uh, I'm going to get my terminal over there, just to show you. And 
the report is generated here. I'm going to compile it. Ching. Let's compile it three times because everybody who knows LaTeX, <laughs> it's better to compile three times. <laughs> no? And Uh, fit page. Of course, I didn't do with with my company logo. It, this is the generic report that is generated from that, and it's basically this with all the information that we saw before, passing by Jinja. If so, have you ever used Jinja before? Yeah. It's awesome, <laughs> right? <laughs> So, and I just include all the graphics and I have a nice PDF to send to my clients. Okay, that's basically what it is. We have four minutes for questions, please questions. I beg you, yeah. Uh, so your package is named after a standard? is the reference implementation for the standard. I am part of the group, of the standard group. And, and in, we meet in Germany twice a year to talk about the standard, to discuss what, the f what algorithms we should use and all that. And this is the reference implementation of the standard, so, so I... It's aligned with the standard very well. The standard is aligned with the... With the <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's kind of... A, of um, Oh, of, oh. <laughs> Let's say I had the option of making my own code and making my code the same as the older company's code, or I had the option to make my code the standard. So, <laughs> the, guess who has to be exactly the same as the other? They have to be exactly the same as me. Right? You see, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little advantage of the open source. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. It's not the data related, but I'm just wondering about because <coughs> you're dealing, you're running it in the vacuum, right? In vacuum? Yeah, no, because you're measuring the quantum dots. No, I'm not measuring quantum dots. Just show us. <laughs> I know, I, I'm measuring quantum efficiency. Okay. Quantum efficiency is just the amount of photons, the percentage of photons that aren't transforming electrons during the, the during the photoelectric uh, process. Okay, the alignment is done manually or electrically? Because it's a diffuse light, the alignment is not that important. You have a diffuse light, like, I mean, uh, for... It's a laser. It's not a laser. Exactly, it's not a laser. It's, it's just an LED source with a narrow band uh, uh, spectrum. So you just have to put your camera in front, more or less in the center, a couple of mill millimeters off is not a big deal. And you're good to go. So you measure visible light, and does, like, does that matter? Do you measure only in the visible light spectrum, or do you measure infrared or ultraviolet, and does that matter? Yeah, it matters. It matters because it depends on the response of your camera, what you want to measure. In general, if your camera is for, um, let's say, human use, we would measure in green specifically, and if we have time, in red and blue. But you can measure in infrared or in ultraviolet, whatever is, is point of your interest. Sorry, you have a question before? Uh, yeah. Well, so first, is this code like open source? Yeah. It's, uh, why did I, I mean, I suck at this, <laughs> really. I should put it here. It's, it's in, oh, we don't have network. It's in GitHub. If you go to GitHub, check, uh, check EMBL 1288, and there you go. It's open source. It depends what are you going to use your camera for. Okay. It's basically that. What parameters of all those long list of parameters you are inter you're interested in, it depends what, what, what are you using your camera for. It, low, low light, high light, the middle, the noise, the dark current, temperature, all that. Yeah. 
in not really because it depends on the specific camera. It's not the best guess today would would be to go for a USB three USB three vision camera. That would be the easiest kind of. No, because you have to characterize the camera that you need. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the other way around. You don't, you don't find a camera to be able to characterize to use it. It's you find a camera that you want to use, and then you characterize it. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry? I never use simple template. I just fall in love with Jinja 2 and we are lovers since, since the beginning. Faithful. Yeah, I'm faithful. You're right, girl. <laughs> the task is basically answering questions from clients. The task is, is this camera good enough for X? Is this camera going to behave well doing that? Hmm, is this camera, how did, could, this camera is ex more expensive than this one. Is it worth it? <laughs> Why do you think we have a standard and an open source uh, tool to characterize the cameras? <laughs> marketing, you, ne you can never trust marketing. Yeah. Uh, if I happen to want to have a camera that works underwater, what like, factors would I look for in terms of this characterization? To work underwater? Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> Apart from the fact that it has to be IP67 or IP68 or something like that to be able to go underwater, then it depends on the what light wavelengths you are going to look for. It really depends on that. And then uh, temperature is not going to be an issue, I guess, unless it's boiling water. <laughs> so, so you can you, you can get rid of the of the dark current the problems and that kind of things, and you concentrate on on your on your range of intensities. I think we're done. Okay, thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>